Daytona proved yet again that no matter the discipline, it will always shine as the season opener. The American driver from Wisconsin, Brian Sawyer, sprinted away from the field after first lap contact with 2022A supercar champion Josh Clogg. As a result, it sent Jess Rakowski flying and caused so much chaos on that first lap. With the pace that he has shown, we wonder if anyone can stop him. A driver by the name of Marcos Palacio will try to do that tonight. The Argentine is known as one of the quickest drivers in the Beetle Lights, and he hasn't been in NASA for a while, so will the rules trip him up? We will find out together tonight. It is all a race for the second round of NASA Rallycross Lights from Charlotte is next. Charlotte Motor Speedway is our venue, and at .85 miles, it proves to be one of the trickiest on the service. Perfection is name of the game here, and it all starts at turns one and two. Approached in top gear, the bravest won't even touch the brakes as you flick the car near the wall of turn number one. Drift slightly wide and place the left rear across the crown of the road. Rip the curb on the apex of turn two and glide over the jump. Fifth gear, again, full commitment as you aim for the wall on turn three's apex. But trust me, the car will grip. Let the car drift out to the sweeping policeman curbs on exit and aim for the tire barriers on driver's right, heading to turn four. Downshift as you hit the jump and you will be sent into the perfect line for the corner, hugging the curb and hitting the grip strip. Turn five, where we saw the Kingsbury brothers crash each other in 2021A, is quite possibly the only real spot to overtake someone. Pay close attention here. Final straightaway in the Joker decision, slightly longer lap with a two to three second delta, but a slower run on corner exit. Don't expect any Jokers on the last lap. Our format for the light series is as follows. 16 cars on the same fixed car setup will be split into four races, six laps apiece, joker lap once. The top two will transfer, winner gets three bonus points, and the runner-up gets two. The rest of our competitors will be funneled into the five lap semifinal races. The winners of these races will also receive one bonus point and transfer through to the feature, as the remaining drivers will be seated in even and odd order down to last, with the points being awarded down to 18th place if we had that many cars. This sets the grid for the 10-lap, 10 10-car 10 feature race where the points are awarded and trophies are handed out, and unique to NASA Rallycross, two jokers are taken during the feature. The first season of NASA Rallycross Lights continues tonight on the Automotive Sports Network. With Brian Sawyer in the production truck, it's Josh Mertz up in the commentary box, as always, as we welcome you to Concord, North Carolina. We'd like to note that our cameras for the entire season are provided by TrekCamps22.com, and our intro music was produced by our very own Alex Abetti. Coming into round number two here in Charlotte, Brian Sawyer has a five-point lead over Bodie Cryer in the Drivers' Championship. Sawyer had that perfect race of a heat win and the win overall in Daytona Beach. Wesley Wickens, nine points back. Seven-time champion in supercars, Josh Mertz sits in the fourth spot, and Josh Clogg, 2022A supercar champion, in fifth with 16 points. Justin Robichaux, Robbie LaRille, Matt Grove, Jess Rakowski, and Eric Kaplinger round out the top 10. The team's championship as well, and despite Brian Sawyer's wonderful start to the season, Eric Kaplinger had struggles in the 277. They are one point behind Woven Planet Gold, with Bodie Cryer and Josh Clogg both having good races in the feature. Sequential Simsport next. They are 10 points down on the lead, with MRT and Mika Esport rounding out the running order there. Despite only having one car, they do have two registered each, but that second driver has not started a race yet. And lastly, before we get rolling with our heat races. We'll go through seeding results here in Concord, North Carolina. Brian Sawyer picking up right where he left off at a 44.155. Josh Mertz sits in second again at a 44.494. Interesting, we talked about in the intro, Marcos Palacio back in NASA, 44.512. He sits in third. Robbie Laril, Josh Clogg round out the top five. Robbie Laril making his debut in the light series. As Bodie Cryer, Rakowski, Wickens, Kaplinger, Robichaux, Vimont, Matt Morris, Justin Robichaux, Olivier Ratteau, Eric Dubois, and Matt Grove round out our seeding grid. 
Heat number one here in Concord, North Carolina. Eric Kapling are on track. His teammate Brian Sawyer. Brian will be on pole position for this first heat race. Josh Clogg, Kapling on the outside pole. Justin Robichaux all by his lonesome on the second row of the grid. But this start, very tricky. The sim doesn't tell you where a car is on your inside or your outside. That explains Remain Rat Toes incident here. And also, when they do, it's flipped. Very infrequent. So let's keep an eye. See if there's going to be any chaos down to turn number one. Struggle bus against Woven Planet in heat number one. Green flag. Looked like Robichaux creeped a little bit on the start. Claw gets both the struggle bus cars down to turn number one. Sawyer will hunt the inside. Makes the move. Stick nearly. Clog takes the lead. Sawyer, Robichaux, and Kaplinger. Across the start finish, down to turn one. Sawyer so deep on the brakes. If he hardly uses them, what a run through the first corner. Clog out wide in the 199. They both miss the apex. Kaplinger putting pressure on Robichaux in the 93. Over the jump for the first time. Into turn number three. Clog has the line over Sawyer. We know Sawyer has the pace through the dirt once again. Up the hill to turn number four. Inside goes Sawyer on Clog. It's going to be the outside run. Clip the dirt there, did Sawyer, to get the run through the corner. And it looks like he'll take the lead over Josh Clogg in the 199. Robichaux and Kapling are third, fourth. That running order has not changed. Sawyer will joker. Clogg thought about it. It looked like there was a brake light and almost a turning into the corner. But he will lead at the end of the first lap ahead of Justin Robichaux, Kaplinger, and Sawyer now in the back of the field. I wonder if Kaplingers might move over if there's team orders at uh, TWR Struggle Bus. But we'll just have to wait and see. As Clog ahead of Robichaux. Sawyer misses the corner around the sleeping policeman, but that's going to for sure be a slowdown on the 88. As Kaplinger on the 277 coming up on Robichaux. Did Robichaux have a slowdown as well or just blow the corner? Sawyer deep into the corner trying to take the spot, but I don't think he served his slowdown yet. Hits the grip strip on the inside. Robichaux Jokers in the 93. So take the 93 out of it for now. Sawyer serving a slowdown. So he will not win this heat race in Charlotte, North Carolina. Robichaux to the outside. Gave him the spot into turn number one. So will Sawyer have the time? We're going to take cross flags this lap. To catch Josh Clogg. And Kaplinger sits in second in his second NASA race ever in a transfer spot. Sawyer nearly did it again in the 88 in the back of the field. Pushing really hard is Brian Sawyer in that 88 points leader with the sky blue plate. Feature carried over from the supercar and sportsman divisions. Clog does not joker. Kaplinger does not joker. Robichaux already did. Sawyer already did. I'm interested to see this lap time from the 88 when he comes around. Clog 44.854. Kaplinger 45.343. Sawyer crosses the line. It did not count his lap because there was that off track. And Kaplinger has not jokered yet, nor has Clog. So we'll see what happens with Robichaux and Sawyer already having one. But with the slowdown with Sawyer... Don't know if that's going to hinder his transfer hopes. As Kaplinger Jokers in the 277. As we ride on board, Brian Sawyer looking at his teammate Kaplinger exit the Joker down to turn number one. Much better line, of course, Sawyer has. Robichaux on the outside. These three of all have jokered. They're all on top of each other for a transfer spot. Clog hasn't taken his joker yet, but he loves this. Kaplinger spun in the 277. From high above. We look at Robichaux leading over Sawyer for the second spot. For the transfer spot. And Clog has not jokered. Will he joker? He will in the 199. Supercar champion from Maryland, Justin Robichaux. Sportsman champion from that season in 2022A. Eh? And Clog will hold the lead over Robichaux and Sawyer. And I don't think Brian's going to have the time to catch Robichaux in the 93. Last lap is a 45-8. Robichaux 45-4. 
Clog with the Joker, 48.2, and Kaplinger is still on track with his damaged car. So the Canadian from New Brunswick sits in second ahead of the, Amer the American from Wisconsin, Brian Sawyer, points leader. It's been a long time a since a points down. leader has not made a feature in NASA Rallycross. And it's going to happen again as Josh Clogg, off the final corner, wins heat number one. Transferring his Roba show to the semifinal goes Sawyer. Thankfully for him, he does have that grid spot. Kaplinger fourth. So thankfully for him, like I mentioned, he does have that grid spot advantage, but still, we know how frantic those semifinals are. And uh, anything can happen in NASA Rallycross, and it usually does. Heat number two. Gridding up Mertz, Cryer, Jake Robichaux, who drives for Slapex Racing now, and Olivier Ratteau. Green flag. Off the line. Looks like Cryer might pull Mertz down to turn number one. Into the first corner. Side by side. Mertz takes the lead deep on the brakes in the 8-12. Rounding turn number two. Robichaux hits the wall in the 69. Battling with Ratteau. And now it'll be a matter of... Joker rotation and if Cryer has the pace because if we reference the seeding times Mertz was a 44-4 Cryer was a 44-8 so it's all a matter of really when there's a pace disparity when you Joker if you get stuck in traffic or also of course mistakes first lap Jokers no Mertz no Cryer, no Ratto. Robichaux does in the 69. The elder Robichaux making his debut for Slapex Racing, partnered with Matt Grove and Robbie Larill. Super exciting for that partnership to see if they can make their way through lights and into supercars together as a team. On lap number two. The start lap doesn't necessarily matter for lap time, but I have a really weird habit of mentioning it. 101.7 for Mertz, 102.5 for Cryer, 104.3 for Ratto, and the Joker 107.257 for Jake Robichaux. Realistically, that Joker, like we mentioned, two to three seconds, maybe four, depending. Just have to wait and see. Mertz Jokers in the 8.12. Ratto in the 63 Jokers. Cryer takes the lead. Robichaux gets by Ratto for the third spot. Robichaux slides it, loses that spot. And now the 69, who nearly got into a feature in supercars last week in Daytona Beach, battling into the wall, goes the 69, but showing great pace is the elder Robichaux. Cryer hits the wall around, and Mertz takes the lead. Here comes Ratto, here comes Robichaux. Contact! In turn four, it's a parking lot with Ratto, Robichaux, and Cryer. Cryer in fourth now. And this is going to be a battle for the transfer spot. Mertz doesn't even know what happened in the 8-12. He's just driving his own race as he takes cross flags. Let's keep an eye on this battle now between Robichaux and Ratto as Cryer's off the road. We still got half a race for a transfer spot. Robichaux, beautiful line in turn two. Huge run, but you can't do anything. Into turn number three, better line through the corner. Will Olivier block and defend the line in the 63? Jake thought about it. Under pressure as Olivier Ratto runs it wide, opens the door for Robichaux off the corner. Turn five, like I mentioned, best spot to overtake. Will he get the grip lane through the corner? Nearly uses him up in the 69. Hits the grip lane, but still can't get it done. Ratto's going to defend down to the final corner. Rounding the final corner, still two laps left of this. They both clobber the curbs, but it doesn't affect them. Robichaud nearly into the wall on corner exit. Into the first corner once again. Both I would say about a car width off the apex, but when you're battling another car, you can't focus on apexes. You have to react to what they do. 
And what a fierce battle that this is between the two elder statesmen in Nassau Rally Cross, Olivier Ratto, Romain's father, and Robichaud, Jake Robichaud, Justin's father, sends him into turn four. They make contact nearly again into five. Will Jake try the over-under again? Olivia is going to open the door. He shuts it as Robichaud hits the wall. We're going to have one lap left of this battle. You haven't missed anything up front. Mertz is pulling away in the 8-12. You'll add another heat race win to his step book as Jake Robichaud's got one lap to try something on Olivier Ratto. Through one, through two. Better line still hit a little bit of that curb. The curb doesn't, uh, the curb grips, maintains its grip. It doesn't have the dirt on it. Ratto defends into turn number four. Robichaud not going to give him a nudge. They're both going to run, but Ratto runs it wide. Will Robichaud send it? Mertz rounds the final corner, wins heat number two. Jake Robichaud to the inside. Oh, yeah. Contact nearly, and Robichaud's not going to get it done gentleman thing to do instead of keep the throttle in and spin your competitor great sportsmanship for jake robo show in the 69 olivier ratto will transfer in heat number two robo show third crier fourth and mertz came over the radio celebrating he had no idea what just happened our third heat race here in concord north carolina kevin vimont Jess Rakowski, Eric Dubois, and Marcos Palacio. The talk of NASA Rally Cross Lights, one of the fastest guys in the lights beetle on the service. Let's see what happens in Heat 3. Green flag off the line. Car length already. Car length and a half. Make it two. Going down to turn number one over Rakowski. Side by side, Dubois and Vimont. So tricky is your spotter. Doesn't call you correctly on that start. Kind of bends the iRacing geometry rules. Clean through turn one. Rakowski runs it wide. Vimont sneaks to the inside. Get a couple car lengths back. And I think this is going to be another battle of the transfer spot. As Palacio pulling away on the triple nine of Jess Rakowski. Kevin Vimont behind Rakowski in the triple nine. He misses the corner. Dubois on the 133. Smells a little blood. Everyone not super strung out. But we'll just have to wait and see. Will Palacio Joker? He will not. Rakowski does in the triple nine. So we will ride on board. The driver from Maryland. The only female competitor in NASA. Off the corner. In front of Dubois who jokered as well. But behind Kevin Vimont. In the 14. Got the grip strip really good through turn two. Over the jump, still fifth gear. Misses the apex just a bit of turn three. Up to sixth gear. Down to fifth, down to fourth. Chasing down Vimont. Palacio has not jokered yet as he closes in on that joker decision, I should say. Now he passes it. Vimont in the 14. And if I'm in his shoes, I would joker now to cover Rakowski instead of potentially losing that time. 44-7-1-8 for Palacio. 45-2-4-5 for Vimont. 45-3-2-5 for Rakowski. 10th down and Dubois. 46-5-5-4. Palacio for TWR Struggle Bus. Struggle Bus was acquired by TWR early in the week. With Brian Sawyer, Eric Kaplinger on those two entries. There is a three-car limit in NASA Rallycross lights and in supercars. So that third slot filled by Palacio from Argentina. And he drives that third car. Still no joker for Vimont. And the delta that he has is shrinking rapidly as we take cross flags in heat number three. Way off the corner is Vimont. Potentially under pressure is the Frenchman. 45841 to a 45130. 45184 for Palacio. A little bit of an off lap for Palacio as Rakowski beat him on lap time. Dubois 47446. Vimont has no delta anymore. Rakowski all over 
the rear wing of the 14. Palacio, still no joker. Just curious to see if these guys would be able to close a delta or if Palacio is pulling away with the inconsistent time. 45, 156. Vimont hit the curb, 45-9, 45-4 for Rakowski. So Palacio made up and then some, gained some time on these two battling. Rakowski into the wall. Still not as bad as it could have been, but lost some time to Vimont. We're coming to the white flag, so Vimont's got two chances to Joker. So he's going to have to make his decision shortly. And Eric Dubois, 46-187, dropping back in the 133. Palacio will wait until the final lap. Vimont Jokers, Rakowski should take the transfer spot in the triple nine. She does. And Palacio, power move to Joker on the last lap of the race. But when you have the pace, you can afford to do it. So Rakowski holds the transfer. Palacio, this is going to help struggle bus in the constructor, or sorry, team's championship. With Sawyer not making the feature through the heat race, he will lose out on those bonus points. And it's not the first time that a championship leader has gone through to the LCQ. But like I mentioned earlier, still no guarantee with the chaos that is those LCQs. Palacio Jokers. Through the final couple of corners, exiting the pit lane of the Roval, the Argentine will win heat number three. Jess Rakowski ahead of Vimont. Vimont put up a good fight. Rakowski transfers in the triple nine. Third is Vimont. And Eric Dubois rounds out our heat three field in fourth. Our final heat of the evening has two Slapex cars in this race. Robbie Larill, Matt Grove, Wesley Wickens, and Matthew Morris. Sequential. Squadra, Stun, Zed, Slapex Racing, represented. Green flag. Even start with Wickens and Larill. This is going to be a good battle. Down to turn one. Morris getting closed in on Grove to the first corner. Wickens lets Larill have it on entry. Gets the run off the corner, taps the brake, says, no, thank you. You can take the side-by-side -side and put it somewhere else. Larill leads into turn one. Very tentative into the corner is Wickens in the 51. Grove in the 472 sneaking in through the first couple of corners. And what hurt Wickens was he was not sideways through turn two. That's going to make him hemorrhage time, realistically, through until this next dirt corner. As every corner links together at this circuit, realistically, Larill so perfect on the grip strip in the 213. Made his comeback to NASA Rallycross about a week ago. And running in the light series now as well. Who will Joker on the first lap here in North Carolina for heat number four? Nobody. Grove doesn't want to let Wickens get too far away. And Larill pulling away in the 213. Went too far onto the crown of the road through the middle of the, the double apex there. And Grove hooked the left rear on the jump. It looked like sent him wide. So a couple mistakes from the Slapex cars early on. And the sequential SimSport car trying to benefit from it. Morris running a quiet race. Larill on the dirt. The grass, I should say. And Wickens might be holding this gap or, or closing it potentially. No joker at the top two. No joker at all again. As we take lap number three here in Charlotte. Take a look at lap times. 45026 to a 45259. It was Larill from Wickens. Grove 461. Morris 460. So two tenths up that last lap was Larill on Wickens in the 51. The American from Louisiana ahead of the Britain. Ahead of Matt Grove in the 472 from Pennsylvania. And Matt Morris from Illinois. Laurel Jokers in the 213. Put Wickens to the lead. Grove behind his teammate now. Will there be team orders? We joked about it in the first heat race with the struggle bus cars. Laurel through the corner. A couple car lengths ahead of his teammate, but now he's got to 
focus on the rear wing of Wickens. Morris, I believe, jokered as well. In the 24, completed his strategy. Cross flags halfway home in heat number four. This will determine the seventh and eighth seeds here in Charlotte for the feature race. And Lorill is there on Wickens. Car length between them. Maybe make it two, maybe three at the worst. And Wickens has not jokered. Lorill has. Grove has as well in the 472. It might be a battle for the transfer spot, potentially, if these two start squabbling and that hinders Wickens, Grove might be able to sneak into the picture. Two laps to go. Car length, make it two. Between the top two, Wickens versus Larill. Last lap, 45-5 to a 44-6, and he's sending it to turn four. To the inside, once again, using the grass. A little bit of a track limits there. Wickens opens the door through turn five. Larill has to rip the handbrake to get the car to rotate. Side by side, down to turn number six. Wickens jokers. I would be, if I was Wickens, I'd be so tempted to run another lap. White flag for Larill in the 213. Into the first couple of corners. Wickens holds the spot over Grove in the 472. LaRue run, runs it wide in the 213. And Wickens, it's going to be a long gap to make up, but Laril into the wall. Did he get a, a slowdown? Wickens goes to the race lead. Grove in the 472. Sees the teammate. What will happen? LaRue off the road. Wickens is going to win this race, but will Matt Grove be able to make the transfer off of turn number five? Grove with the run off the corner. Will Larill let him have it? It looks like he will. Final corner, Wickens wins, and Matt Grove benefits from his, or his teammate's issue to transfer. Larill third, Morris fourth. Another quick car to the semifinals here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And that first semifinal coming up shortly. Eric Kapling or Kevin Vimont and Eric Dubois. Five lap race, Joker lap once, winner transfers as we get ready to go green in Charlotte. Off the line, Sawyer gets half a car length pulled on Vimont down to turn one. Kapling are clear as well into the first corner. Kapling are backs out of the corner, so does Vimont. Dubois sneaks into second, Sawyer leads. Rounding the final corner to begin the first lap. Three, maybe make it four car lengths between Sawyer and Dubois. Dubois wide nearly into the wall in the 133. Vimont battling Kaplinger on the brakes in turn two. A little bit of a brake check to Kaplinger in the 277. And it's going to be a test for these guys that uh, don't necessarily have the pace. No disrespect towards them. But Brian Sawyer, fastest man, points leader for a reason. Fun fact, actually, one of the fastest guys in the Beetle Light in overall iRacing official sessions, Dubois runs it wide, nearly uh, contact with Vimont. But Brian Sawyer, normally up front, and these guys are going to be battling for best of the rest, I do think, unless something happens. Fastest in qualifying. Had that slowdown, Sawyer, at the end of the first lap, leads. Ahead of Dubois, last lap. Kaplinger was third, Vimont was the only car to take to the Joker. Dubois, a little bit of an issue over the jump. I believe he did the same thing that happened to Grove. He hooked the left rear over the side of the Excuse jump. Me. Obviously, one wheel on the uh, not on the dirt is a problem. Dubois compounds his issues by running into the wall in turn four, off the road, and Kaplinger to second spot. Remember, this second is not for a transfer spot. The only car to transfer would be the winner. Brian Sawyer will take lap number three. Kaplinger and Dubois battle for second. Into turn one. Sawyer pulling away. Last lap, 44-806. Kaplinger, 45-749, I should say. Dubois with a 47-287. So like I mentioned, these guys lower on pace. Sawyer a second quicker. And Kevin Vimont's last lap, 45-691. So he's on pace with Kaplinger to battle for second. And like we mentioned in the opener, if you don't make the feature, you are seated down um, the order, 11th to 16th. 
So whoever finishes second in this race will be credited with 11th overall as this is the first semifinal. Sawyer Jokers in the 88. He will come out cleanly and clearly ahead of Kaplinger in the 277. Dubois still sits in third. Into turn one once again. Two laps to go for Sawyer in the 88. That last lap was a 47-0. Kaplinger 45-6. 46-9 for Dubois and a 45-4 for Vimont. I wonder when Kaplinger is going to joker. Dubois has not jokered yet, nor has Kaplinger. They have two laps left to do it. And Vimont being held up by Dubois. This is not helping him to battle for the second spot. Kaplinger, Dubois, Vimont, as Sawyer still clear of the field. Final corner for him. He'll take the white flag in the 88. Kaplinger jokers. So does Dubois. This should put... Vimont to second, into turn number one. Sawyer leads, runs it wide, and Brian Sawyer's into the fence in the 88 in turn one. The points leader, the fastest man here, into the wall, and here comes Vimont and Kaplinger. Contact between them, and both struggle bus cars are around. Eric Dubois goes to the race lead. What is happening in Charlotte, North Carolina? I don't think Brian's going to make this feature. He's got half a lap to claw this gap back. And Eric Dubois, after the issues earlier, might sneak his way, a lot like Adam Simons in 2012 in Riverside, to a feature here in 2023. The leaders, well, Sawyer crashed on his own, then the second and third crashed. And he's going to do it. Off the final corner. Eric Dubois will win semifinal A. Sawyer, points leader, best of the rest. He comes Yay! home 11th. 13th, Kaplinger, and 15th will be Vimont. This changes everything for the feature. We still have one semifinal left. Two Slapex cars in this race, and a reminder, Robbie Larill and Bodie Cryer are in this race. So one of the fast guys is going home out of this race. Matt Morris, that fourth car. Getting ready in Charlotte. What drama already for the first round of semifinals. Green flag. Laurel gets a great jump over Cryer and Robichaux. They'll be side by side down to the first corner with Laurel leading. Cryer pulls ahead of Robichaux in the 69. Morris lingers back in the 24, pulling the Eric Dubois. Waiting for something to happen as we begin the first lap. Larill had that issue on the final lap of the heat race, near the end of the heat race at least. And Cryer, car length away in the 0-5. Remember, Bodie's one of the fastest guys in the Pro 2 Pro 4 trucks. And he's won an Endurance Cup here in Supercars in NASA Rallycross. <clears throat> so potentially a good omen for Bodie Cryer in the 0-5, the man from Texas. Car length between Larill and Cryer, who will joker on the first opportunity. Leaders do not. Cryer does. So Cryer jokers. Robichaud does not. Morris does not. Larill pulling away. <clears throat> oh, uh, Jake Robichaud, sorry, sits in second. Third Morris, fourth Cryer after his Joker. <clears throat> so now I think what what might have killed Bodie Cryer, he's gonna be stuck in traffic between Morris, Robichaux, and then Larill, and he knows that he sends it and hits the wall. It's so tricky to do a first lap Joker here in Charlotte because this is exactly what happens. And again, it's no disrespect to obviously the slower guys in the order, but we're gonna watch this rotation. And I think Larill is gonna cleanly. As Robichaux takes the lead, Larill clearly takes the spot over Cryer, and Cryer lost a huge amount of uh, ground to the 213. Slapex teammates, 69 and 213 yet again. Robichaux gets a good run up the jump. It's almost like there's a little cushion if you hit the jump just right on that ramp. Robichaux had some issues through turn three. Car length and a half, maybe two. Deep into the corner goes Larill. Hits the grip strip to the inside. Will he force the issue on his teammate? He has to make sure he gets by his teammate. Shoves him into the wall because here comes Cryer in the 0-5. Robichaux out wide. Pinches his teammate. This is not good for Robbie Larill, who jokered on the second lap. 
Robichaux has not jokered yet. We take two laps to go, and if he keeps squabbling, Bodie Cryer is going to have another opportunity into turn number one. Robichaux, Larill, Cryer, Morris in the 24, sits in fourth. Much better run through turn two, it looked like, from Cryer over Larill. Turn three, better corner as well for Cryer. He is focused on getting by the 213 of Robbie Larill, who is getting held up again. He opens the door. He was on the second groove in the 213. Clipping the grass, getting the car to rotate deeper into the corner. Robichaux hugs the grip strip, and it shoves Larill out wide. Battle for second. Side by side, will Robichaux Joker come to the white flag? He will not. Cryer holds the spot, forced his way through on Larill, and takes the second spot. And there's no delta between these guys, so this is essentially... Granted, we can't really say this because anything can happen, but it's basically the race lead. So we are still focusing on a transfer spot and a semifinal win here in Charlotte. As Robichaux into the fence in the 69, a huge ca crash miscalculation for the elder Robichaux. Larill knows it. Larill dives to the inside. He's got two corners left. Didn't let Robichaux crashing distract him. Not a good day for the team, but Larill doesn't care about that. To the inside on Cryer. Much better run through the corner. Hit the inside line. Perfect. Contact off the dirt nearly on the asphalt again. Larill sends it to the inside. Clobbers the curb in the 213. This is for the win in the semifinal. Larill will not get there. Cryer will transfer. Larill 12th. 14th Morris, 16th Jake Robichaux, and if the heats and semifinals have been anything, can't wait for this feature. <clears throat> Inside Clog on McKenna. Contact between them. As we get ready for the second round overall and the second round of the first season of NASA Rally Cross Lights, our grid Josh Clog, Josh Mertz, Marcos Palacio, Wesley Wickens, Justin Robichaux, Olivier Ratto, Jess Rakowski, Matthew Grove, Eric Dubois, Bodie Cryer. 10 cars, 10 laps, two jokers, no Brian Sawyer. This is going to get spicy. We welcome you on ASN. Green flag in Concord, North Carolina. Off the line, the top three, pretty even. Second row, even as well. Down to the first corner. Mertz nearly cl uh, pressures Clog. Clog takes the spot. Palacio takes second from Mertz. Side by side through the first couple of corners. Mertz to the inside, nearly contact between them as we take the first lap of the race. Clog leads over Palacio. Robichaux sits in fourth behind Mertz. Palacio to the inside, already trying to assert his dominance over the jump for the first time. Top three under a blanket. Wickens, Cryer, Rateau, Rakowski, Dubois, and Grove. Still side by side. Palacio and Grove up. You're sorry, Palacio and Clog into the corner in turn four. Clog shoves Palacio. Mertz checks Palacio. Says, get out of the way. I'll take this spot. Clog holds the spot. Will Mertz do an over under? Here comes Robichaux on the 83 of Palacio. Palacio, and Robichaux takes the spot. Wickens pressures the 83 as well. Who will Joker? Mertz does, and that might not be a good decision. We saw in the heat race earlier, too, too early of a Joker, excuse me, there, and that might not be a good thing. He's going to be trapped behind Rateau, Cryer, Wickens. Clog leads. Robichaux second, Palacio third. 
Mertz stuck behind the 63 of Rateau, Grove, Rakowski, Dubois. The remaining running order behind him. Robichaud under pressure, clips the curve. Palacio looked to the inside for a moment, thought better of it, but now takes the inside, slides through the corner. Robichaud loses the second spot. Wickens pressuring the Canadian now. But Robichaud's not done with the Argentine Palacio. Cryer from Texas behind Wickens by a car length. Olivier Ratto from France. Mertz from Ireland. And Mertz is going to joker again. The St. Eustache strategy from so many years ago. Justin Robichaud jokers. But I hate to inform Josh Mertz that that strategy only worked when there were six cars. There's ten here and you're still stuck in traffic. Rakowski behind him. Dubois. So Mertz is an eighth. Clog pulling away from Palacio. The last lap is a 44.858 to a 45.3. The squabbling that Palacio had to do was not beneficial in the slightest. On lap number three, no jokers from the top four. Olivier Rateau sits in the fifth position as he has not jokered yet. Now he will in the 63. Taking a look back up front, Clog, Palacio, Wickens, Cryer, Robichaud, Grove, Mertz, Rateau, Rakowski, and Dubois. Battles throughout the field here in Charlotte. Last lap is a 45 dead for Clog, 44 5 for Palacio, 45 1 for Wickens, 45 2 for Cryer, 46 2 for Robichaud. Mertz looks like. We caught it at the end. Did he hit Grove in the 472 or did they both go wide? Desperate to get by this traffic is the 812. Still no joker from the top two. As we take lap five, getting close to cross flags here in North Carolina. Dubois and Rateau, joker in the back of the field. Into turn number one. Out of turn number two. Mid-pack. Clog still leads. Best battle we have is Grove versus Mertz in the mid-pack. As strategy is not unraveled for the top, really, four cars. Grove deep into turn four. Will Mertz take the spot on the 472 in the 812? Up front, no jokers. Side by side, Mertz takes the spot. Jokering is Cryer. Cross flags for Clog in the 199. Palacio Wickens, that has not changed. Cryer, Mertz, Grove, Robichaud, mid-pack has changed. Getting closer to the podium, but like we mentioned, I think the Joker was too early for the 812. So used to running on the NASCAR 2003 days, but not this amount of traffic. And those circuits had slightly longer Jokers. Robichaud versus Grove now. Best battle it looks like that we've got. As Robichaud to the inside of Grove in the 472, in the 93, I should say, on the 472. Jokering is Palacio. First pin is pulled. And it looked like there was no gap between those two when we took a look. Wickens, Cryer, Mertz. Robichaud, Grove has crashed in the 472. He hit the wall in the Joker, it looked like. And over was the man from Pennsylvania. He talked about at least uh, he hopes, he prays, he makes a feature. He made the feature, but he didn't hope for that kind of incident. As Clog still has not jokered. Palacio's got one left. And there's really the delta for only one joker for Clog on Palacio. And that's how quick Palacio is. Jokering is Clog. Jokering is Palacio. Wiccan still has one left. Cryer jokers. Mertz was already done with his strategy. So put him to fourth. Palacio comes out in front of Wiccan's. And Palacio's strategy is done. Wiccan still has a joker left. So Wiccan's and Mertz might be the battle for third as we take three to go with Clog entering turn three. Palacio, 47-9 to a 48-5. Those were both joker laps from Palacio to Clog. Six-tenths of a second was the difference. In the back of the field, Grove jokered again. He did not crash this time. Just an update on Matt Grove's vehicular gymnastics that he's practicing for. 
Cloggle Joker again. Palacio does not have to Joker, so let's take an eye. Take a look. Words are hard. Race lead. Palacio battling Clog nearly side by side on exit. They are. Palacio to the inside. Nearly into the wall. Checks Clog. Clog does not hit the wall. Two laps to go. Mertz got by Wickens when Wickens jokered, and now Wickens battling with Cryer, excuse me there, as it is getting spicy for first and for fourth. Here comes Robichaux battling with Cryer, still not missing anything up front. Clog the inside of Palacio contact between them for the race lead, and they are both into the wall, saved it. And Mertz is loving this in the 8-12. It has been quite some time since Mertz won, so if anything goes Wrong. Expect a party for the 8-12, but I don't think anything's going to happen. These two, two of the fastest guys, former champion is clogged, both super respectful as we take the white flag. It has settled itself out for fourth. Wickens, Robichaux, Cryer, Rakowski, Rateau, Dubois, and Grove rounding out that running order so far. We've got one lap left through turn two, and Palacio, right as I go to say, basically has it. Clog hits the wall, and that might have solidified it. Right front damage. Might get some suspension damage on the 199. And Marcos Palacio trying to win. If we count Supercars wins in this, Palacio has not won in NASA ever. One of the fastest guys here, and he has not won in several seasons that he's been here. Through the final corner, Brian Sawyer might not be up front for the struggle bus, but Palacio is. He wins in Charlotte ahead of Josh Clogg, and Josh Mertz back on the podium for the first time in three years in NASA Rallycross. Wickens comes home in fourth, fifth Robichaux, sixth Cryer, seventh looks like it'll be Rakowski, eighth Rateau, ninth Dubois, and tenth Grove once they, of course, get to the line. But Marcos Palacio, like we mentioned, if we include lights and supercars, he's the 42nd winner in the history of the championship. Brian Sora was the 41st last week. And as Matt Grove comes across to finish in 10th, we get confirmation of that classification at the end here in Charlotte. Marcos Palacio wins over Josh Clogg. Josh Mertz in third. First podium since 2020 A Wild Horse. And if you exclude that uh, uh, Philip Krause, his teammate, had to be penalized for Mertz to be on the podium. It has been Mertz, Mertz's first podium since 2019 B Bent Twig over 75 races ago. Re Wesley Wickens in fourth. Justin Robichaux rounds out the top five in the 93. Bodie Cryer, Jess Rakowski, Olivier Ratto, Eric Dubois, and Matt Grove round out our final and a reminder of the cars that did not make the feature this evening brian sawyer points leader no longer robbie larill surprise as well eric kaplinger matt morris kevin vimont and jake robichaud has points going into the third and final round of the championship here in the light series and it is getting spicy josh clogg has a two-point lead over Bodie Cryer, Wesley Wickens, and Josh Mertz. A three-way tie for second. And then Brian Sawyer is one point behind them. Consider it a four-way tie for second, and it's only separated by two points. We can basically call it a winner-take-all next week in Phoenix, and that race is going to be great. Make sure to join us next Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, on ASN On Demand. Justin Robichaud, Marcos Palacio, Rakowski, Matt Grove, Robbie Laurel round out the top ten. The team's championship also all to play for between Woven Planet Gold and TWR Struggle Bus. It's 78 versus 74. Sequential Simsport 61, MRT 37, Mika Esport 25, and Slapex Racing has 18. What a race here in Concord, North Carolina. Be sure to join us tomorrow for live coverage of the Overwatch Specialty Service NASA Rallycross Challenge from the racing capital of the world in Indianapolis, Indiana. We're going to see the next chapter of Rateau versus Martel. It has been a titanic battle all season long between those two French-speaking drivers. Just as a note, we'd like to note that our cameras for this entire season are provided by TrekCams22.com, and our intro music was produced by our very own Alex Abetti. For Brian Sawyer, Philip Krause, Cody Erdman, Victor Valley, my name is Josh Mertz, as we hope to see you tomorrow in Indianapolis or next week in Phoenix. But until then, so long, everyone. <laughs>